When we work with speech or image recognition systems, all the information is already present in the form of rich, dense feature vectors embedded in high-dimensional datasets, like audio spectrograms and image pixel intensities. However, when it comes to raw text data, first we convert our text into numbers in a process called vectorization. Vectors are combined to form a vector space. A vector space model is simply a mathematical model to represent unstructured text or any other data as numeric vectors, such that each dimension of the vector is a specific feature attribute. We are dealing with individual words, which may have their own identifiers and do not capture the semantic relationship amongst words. This leads to huge sparse word vectors for textual data. And thus, if we do not have enough data, we may end up getting poor models. Traditional feature engineering strategies for textual data are count-based and belong to a family of models known as a bag of words model. This includes term frequencies, TFIDF, engrams, topic models. While they are effective methods for extracting features from text due to the inherent nature of the model being just a bag of unstructured words, we lose additional information like semantics, structure, sequence, and context around the words in each text document. A vector space model or term vector model is a useful concept when dealing with textual data and is very popular in information retrieval and document ranking. Mathematically, this can be defined as follows. Consider we have a document D in a document vector space, Vs. The number of dimension or columns for each document will be the total number of distinct terms or words for all documents in the vector space. So we can denote vector space as shown in this formula. So we have n distinct words across all documents, which can represent document D, and WDN is a weight for word, which is numeric value, for example, a frequency of occurrence. Each text document is a numeric vector, where each dimension is a specific word from the corpus, and the value could be its frequency, occurrence, denoted as 1 or 0, or even weighted values. There are several common methods for extracting numerical features from text content, tokenizing strings and giving an integer ID for each possible talking, for instance, by using white space or punctuation as a token separators, counting, we count occurrences of each talking in each document, normalizing, when we normalize and weight with diminishing importance talkings that occur in the majority of documents. In this representation, features are individual talking occurrence frequency, normalize or not, and sample is the vector of all talking frequencies for a given document. A corpus of documents can be represented by matrix with one row per document and one column per word that occur in a corpus. And of course, most documents typically use a very small subset of words used in a corpus, so the resulting matrix may have many feature values that are zeros. And the feature matrix is traditionally represented as a sparse matrix. We can implement both tokenization and occurrence counting using the single class count vectorizer. Count vectorizer has many parameters. Let's use it to tokenize and count word occurrences of a corpus of text documents. So we will set mean df, which is cut off. When we build our vocabulary, we would like to ignore terms that have a document frequency strictly lower than the given threshold. We'll set stop words to English, and we keep default true for lower cases in token patterns. During the fit, each term found by the analyzer will be given a unique integer index corresponding to a column in the resulting matrix. You can clearly see that each column or dimension in the feature vectors represent a word from the corpus, and each row represents one of our documents, and we have eight documents. The value in any cell represents the number of times that word occur in a specific document. Recall that in bag of words we have n dimensions that correspond to n number of unique words across all corpus. 
a word is just a single talking, often known as a unigram, and as a result, the bag of words model does not consider the order of words. Bigrams, on the contrary, indicate n-gram of order two, or two words. Then we can have trigrams, which will indicate n-grams of order three, and so on. You can set n-gram range parameter in our class count vectorizer to output biograms. In fact, n-gram range allows us to set minimum and maximum range. It will be tuple with minimum and maximum range to be extracted, so you can have a, a different lower and upper boundary. There are some potential problems that might arise with the bag of words model when it is used on large corpora. If we count all words equally, then some words end up being emphasized more than we need, and for example, the main character, as for instance in our small corpus king, will not stand out by simple frequency count alone. As you can see, the frequency count for king is just one. We would like a representation that highlights meaningful words. TFIDF is a simple twist on the bag of words approach. TFIDF stands for Term Frequency Inverse Document Frequency. Instead of looking at the raw counts of each word in each document, TFIDF looks at the normalized count where each word count is divided by the number of documents this word appears. TF, term frequency, gives us the frequency of the word in each document in the corpus. It is the ratio of the number of times the word appears in a document compared to the total number of words in that document. It increases as the number of occurrences of that word within the document increases, and each document will have its own TF. Inverse data frequency, IDF, is used to calculate the weight of rare words across all documents in the corpus. The words that occur rarely in the corpus have a high IDF score. In our function, we have n, total number of documents, divided by df, number of documents containing that specific word. Let's take an example to get a clear understanding of tf, idf. We have two documents. You can see the common stock word the is present in both documents. Remember that for each document tf is calculated separately, and it is a word count divided by the total number of a document vocabulary words. So we have 2 tf for the word the. In the first document it's 1 over 7, and 7 is the total number of vocabulary, and the same with the second document, as the word the occurs only once in each document. And remember, we have total number of documents, n as nominator, and df, number of document containing word, as denominator. Let's look at the word car. You notice it occur only in the first document, so we have zero for the second document. In idf, our nominator is two, we have two documents, divided by one, because the word car appear only in one document. And tf, idf, is the product of tf, in IDF. Common words in this model have zero, which show they are not significant. On the other hand, we notice that car, truck, road, and highway are non-zero. This word have more significance, so we have a high weight of the TF-IDF calculation when we have a high term frequency in a given document, which is local parameter in the low document frequency of the term of the whole collection, which is global parameter. First, we need to instantiate TFIDF vectorizer. This vectorizer converts a collection of raw documents to a matrix of TFIDF features. Let's use our normalized corpus that we created earlier. See chapter 4 for more details. We're using fit transform method. This method learns vocabulary in IDF and return term document matrix. Since the matrix is parse, let's convert it to array and print feature names. We have 8 rows, 8 documents, and we have 20 columns. Those are 20 unique features. Recall that our TFIDF formula is a product of two vectors, term frequency and inverse document frequency. However, you may agree that the two documents might appear different simply because they have different length, or have longer documents containing more words. So we need to have a normalized version of TFIDF matrix. This matrix will consider the frequency of words relative to each other while removing the effect of total word count. Normalizing a vector is the same as calculating unit vector, which has a length of 1, and vector length is measured as magnitude. You can see the example using NP-LIN-ALG norm 
function to calculate the magnitude, the length of the vector. During the process of normalization, we'll be transforming the length of vector, for example, 10, into the vector with just the length of 1. Let's look at this formula. The v hat is our unit vector, or normalized vector. v with arrow on the top is just representation of the vector that we're going to normalize. And the bottom, this is a representation for the norm, magnitude, or length of the vector. And what about p? So usually the length of a vector is calculated using the Euclidean norm, a norm that assigns strictly positive length or size to all vectors in a vector space. So if you take a vector, an example vector u, for instance, to calculate the magnitude of this vector, we'll use Euclidean formula, Euclidean norm, square root of sum of vector element squares. L2 norm, another name for Euclidean norm, also default for our TF idea vectorizer. So we do not really need to specify norm equal L2 when we run our vectorizer.